Hello, my name is Jeff Gerard, and I'm president of the Concrete Countertop Institute. Today, I'm going to teach you how to reinforce concrete countertops so that you can have confidence and avoid cracking. I'll help you understand what kind of structures concrete countertops are, how to reinforce that structure, and clear up some common misconceptions about reinforcing. Reinforcing is critical, not just after the countertop is installed and being used by the client, but beforehand, while it's still in your shop being processed and during transportation and installation. Reinforcing concrete countertops is more than simply sticking steel in the concrete. You have to understand what kind of structure you're making. If you make a concrete countertop like you make a driveway or a sidewalk, it won't perform the way you expect it to. Driveways, sidewalks, floors, and roads are all slabs on grade. And slabs on grade depend entirely on the compacted subgrade to support the concrete and any weight applied to it. Load is transferred through the concrete into the subgrade. If a void happened to open up in a concrete driveway, cracks would quickly form in the concrete as a car drove over that void. A concrete slab on grade cannot perform without the subgrade supporting it. Concrete countertops are beams. Beams are fundamentally different kinds of structures than slabs on grade. Beams are designed to be self-supporting and span an open space. A common example of a beam is a bridge. The bridge spans a river and supports traffic driving over it. And countertops are like a bridge. They span open cabinets. Well-designed countertops can support their own weight plus additional weight set on them. It's unnecessary to add plywood to the cabinet tops since beams don't need external support. Since countertops are beams, let's examine how beams work so you can understand how to properly reinforce them. I've selected this cartoon to illustrate the basic behavior of a beam when it's loaded with weight. As you can see, the long thin plank bends with all that weight on it. Conceptually, it's easy to understand that a beam bends more when more weight is applied. It's also easy to grasp that the longer the beam and the thinner it is, the more it will bend. It's that basic behavior that creates the stresses in the beam and dictates where the reinforcing needs to be positioned. I've made a diagram which represents the cross section of a beam when it's being bent. The drawing lets us see the forces developed when that beam bends. And when a beam bends, the top surface is being made shorter so the material at the top is being put into compression. At the same time, the bottom surface is stretched out and made longer. It's put into tension. The compression and tension forces are greatest at the outer surfaces of the beam. As you move closer to the middle of the beam, the forces diminish. At the very center, there's no compression or tension at all. The common practice of placing reinforcing in the middle of a concrete countertop positions that reinforcing where there's no tension for it to resist. In essence, the countertop is behaving as if it had no reinforcing whatsoever. You're relying solely on the tensile capacity of the concrete to hold the countertop together. So why does this matter? Concrete can have a very high compressive strength, and it's easy to make 8, 9, or even 10,000 PSI concrete, but it's the tensile strength that matters. Concrete's tensile strength is 10 to 20 times less than its compressive strength. When concrete cracks, it's because it failed in tension, not compression. To demonstrate this, I've made a small concrete beam, which I've bent. You can clearly see the tension cracks on the underside, where the bottom of the beam is being stretched out. This highlights the need for reinforcement and where to place it in the countertop. Reinforcing resists tension forces, so it must be placed close to where the tension is greatest, and that's on the bottom of the beam. But some parts of a countertop need reinforcing in other locations. Bar top overhangs are sections of countertop that extend well beyond the edge of the countertop, edge of the cabinets. A bar top overhang is a kind of beam called a cantilever. A diving board is a cantilever too, and the silly picture of a cow on a diving board shows what happens when weight is put on the cantilever. Because the diving board is bending downwards, the top surface is being stretched out. So where do you think the best place would be to put reinforcing for a concrete cantilever? At the top, of course, where the tension is greatest. So to understand reinforcing, you first need to know what kind of structure a concrete countertop is. Then you need to understand how beams behave when they bend 
and how the forces inside them are distributed. And finally, you need to identify where the tension forces are greatest so that you can place your reinforcing in the right location. That way, the countertop can be handled, transported, and used by the client crack-free. But it's not enough simply to put the reinforcing in a specific location and expect it to work. The reinforcing needs to be oriented correctly, too. If we think back to the cartoon plank, which direction would you orient the wood grain to ensure the plank wouldn't break? Would it run across the blank, plank or along its length? Tension forces run in straight line, just like a rope being pulled in a tug of war. Wood grain running along the length of the plank is oriented parallel to the tension lines of force. This makes the wood strong and resist breaking. If the grain ran across the short width of the plank, it would be very weak and break before much weight could be applied. Tension runs from end to end, so the reinforcing should also run from one end of the countertop to the other. Place your reinforcing in the direction of the tension forces and lay it in straight lines. This countertop is a good example of poor reinforcing. Most of the reinforcing runs across the narrow width of the countertop, and very little runs along its length, where the tension forces are greatest. In addition, the practice of outlining the slab with heavy rebar demonstrates a lack of understanding of how reinforcing really works. Wrapping a hole with rebar doesn't make the countertop any stronger. Furthermore, the reinforcing starts and stops. It should run continuously from one end to the other. Chopping a hole in the grid to make room for a sink knockout weakens the slab by cutting the reinforcement. A crane can't lift anything if its cable's cut and a beam won't work if the reinforcing is discontinuous. Being successful with reinforcing involves not only placing the reinforcing in the right location and orientation, it also requires the use of the right kind of material. The whole point of reinforcing a countertop is that you can fabricate it, transport it, install it, and ensure that the client can use the countertop with confidence, knowing it won't break or crack. To do this, you must use the right kind of material. Structural materials give you confidence and that assurance that the material will always perform the way you expect it to. Structural steel and carbon fiber are designed to be used in concrete as tensile reinforcement. I use, teach, and advocate the use of masonry block ladder wire, which is a form of structural steel reinforcing. This 9 gauge ladder wire is small and easy to handle, making it easy to put reinforcing where it's most effective. The small diameter is important, as the scale of the reinforcing must be in proportion to the concrete's thickness. Not just any material will work as reinforcing. Stucco mesh, sometimes called diamond lath, chicken wire and fencing materials are not appropriate. None of these are meant to take structural loads. Yes, they're metal, but so is aluminum foil. Using weak reinforcing materials such as these is risky and frankly foolish. Number three rebar, on the other hand, is 3 eighths diameter structural steel reinforcing. It's the right material to use, but the size is too big for inch and a half or even two inch thick countertops. That's why smaller number nine gauge ladder wire is better. Up until now, I've been talking about steel as reinforcing, but glass fiber reinforced concrete doesn't use steel. Instead, GFRC relies on high volumes of structural glass fibers to resist the tensile forces. It doesn't matter if a countertop is made out of conventionally reinforced concrete or if it's made out of GFRC. The same structural principles apply to both, whether it's GFRC or what reinfor steel reinforced concrete. All beams behave the same general way regardless of what they're made out of. To illustrate what proper reinforcing can do, I've selected some pictures that demonstrate what can be done when you understand how reinforcing works. These photos show how far you can take reinforcing. I made a beam that's eight foot long, six inches wide, and an inch and a half thick. After stacking 500 pounds of sand on the beam, it flexed almost an inch and a half, but it didn't crack. I hope you're convinced that reinforcing is important and that you will use this information to make stronger, better countertops and have more confidence in them. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please send them to me using the form below. For more videos and information, visit the Concrete Countertop Institute website. Thank you.